<laughs> What's up, y'all? I am your favorite on-air personality, Georgia Dawn, and I'm in the building with Quana MC. What's up, girl? What's up? Okay, so being that we are both from Savannah, Georgia, we have a lot to talk about. We're actually here on the campus of CAU, which is where you graduated from. Yep. I'm graduating next May, so it's lit. So we have a lot to talk about, you guys. Yes. But first and foremost, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. How about I'm, you? I'm really, really good now that you are here because I was having a really bad day, actually. <laughs> But, okay, let's go ahead and get into this interview. And my first question to you is, how did you kind of discover, or what did you take rapping serious? Well, when I took it seriously, I would say I was, like, 21, just graduated, just moving to New York, like, saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I started, like, putting together the pieces to make it a career. Okay, so being that you were, you are from Savannah, Georgia, and you attended Clark Atlanta University, and then you moved to New York, so at what point did you kind of like feel like okay this is really like my life is really moving fast like it's really is on like when you move to new york um yeah i mean i don't know i feel like leaving clark i already felt like i could do anything mm -hmm. so like going to new york was just like that okay like, let me if i feel like i can do it let me test it out mm -hmm. phase and when i started rapping like i was doing the open mics and people were like oh you need to be you know doing bigger stages and blah blah and you but you need to work on your writing. It was like every challenge that I was given with music, I feel like I was passing it and exceeding it. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I was like, okay, wow, like this is really it because I was moving into some like moving progressing in something that I had I never planned for. Because mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna be like a writer or a lawyer mm -hmm. or something like and I don't know, that's to me like that's what made me realize like wow, this must be this, for me. Because I just was like moving without even like planning. It's it like out. you don't even realize how much you're putting in, like hard work you're putting into, but you don't care because you enjoy everything. Yeah, day. that's how I am. So that's what's up. And I, I could definitely say the same thing for me. When I came to college, I wanted to do criminal criminal justice, but I'm a cry baby, so that's not my lane. <laughs> and then like when I started getting into the whole radio thing, I was like, I don't even feel like I'm working, like I really, I'm having fun. So I have I see that you're having a lot of fun. Like I, I look at the, your performances on Instagram and you're having fun. So so shout out to you because some people just they just get on that stage and they just sing or do whatever and they don't in, they don't interact with the crowd. Right. But you interact, get turned, and I love it. Um. So my next question is, what projects do you have coming up, or what current uh, projects do you have currently? Oh, well, I just released the EP in January called Queenie. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it's a seven song EP. I start I open it with spoken word. Okay. Um, and I ended with basically, it's a story about me moving to New York, actually, and being from the South and coming into my own, my own sound mm -hmm. and like dealing with the hustle of New York. Yeah. And it ends and it talks about like carefree black girls. I speak on like my crown, that whole situation. I speak on love and heartbreak and mm -hmm. yeah. So you're basically just un unraveling your life. You're just letting us yeah. see what's going on, your different functions. Okay, so my really big thing that I like about you on Instagram and Twitter is you embrace the black community with carefree black girl, queenie. You um, also do like history facts on black women. Yeah. So let's just share a little bit about that, like basically how you empower other people. Well, I like my whole, I, I guess my makeup, I'm, a, I'm the oldest of four. So I guess like me, I've always been having to like look out for somebody else and like share what I have, mm -hmm. bring people in. So I'm all about just black intelligence, pushing black people to the next level, um, you know, exposing people to different things. So I always try to like inform people because I understood quickly, like even though I was at, in college at CAU, like mm -hmm. I grew up, grew up on the east side of Savannah, so my family out, it was like, it okay. was like, you know, people were still in the streets, mm -hmm. so people never even, like, thought of going to college, yeah. and I had three siblings behind me that mm -hmm. needed to, like, understand me, and I couldn't be so, like, far ahead that I couldn't reach back, right. so I've always right. tried to, like, keep that balance, and I don't know, like, I... I don't know, you say, like, highlight some women or how, like, who, who do you want me to highlight? Like, my no, women? I'm just saying, like, on Twitter, I've seen you uh, put some people up. It was, like, Black History or you were speaking on, I want to say she was, um, I think she was a soldier. Oh, Queenie. And, oh, yeah. my EP. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Queenie is a female mafia boss. So, mm -hmm. she was, she didn't make her money mostly the honest way. She set up a numbers bank and she sold liquor during the Prohibition era. Um, she was the only female woman 
female involved in the whole operation. Um, you meet, she's dealing with mob bosses, Italian. She's dealing with, um, you know, Aerie, like all types of people mm -hmm. that, you know, she wouldn't really, you wouldn't really think of her to do, to be in contact with. Mm -hmm. But she also like speaking against like police brutality right. and like putting money into the community, doing after school programs for the kids. And she did all this during the Harlem Renaissance where you have Baldwin, like she mm -hmm. has pictures of her drinking tea with Baldwin and like, you know, hanging out with all these prestigious people. Mm -hmm. So my EP, I named it Queenie because I looked at her life and I was like, wow, like she really went to New York. She found a way, she made one. Like she's Haitian. Model, she wasn't born. Model. Yeah, model. <laughs> Shout out to you. So I felt like she was somebody to, you know, I could use to tell my story as well as like highlight her because everybody's like, oh, why did you name it Queenie? And it gives me an opportunity to tell, to tell about story. her because she did a lot for people and she, even though a lot of it was illegal, she actually got a lot of police fired from the force. Mm -hmm. Like she fed a lot of children, sent kids to college and, you know, she did a lot. And yeah. a lot of times like people we judge other people by how they make the money but not how what they do with it. Right. And people like we be like, oh, this person's a doctor or whatever, but they did don't nothing for nothing the community. Back. They don't That's even true. take care of their kids. You That's know what true. I mean? That's so true. we That's have true. to like, you know, judge people in a different way. I like that. I really like that. I think that a lot of artists, um, they're missing that they need to have a message behind everything they do. Sometimes right. people just put out things like, why are you doing it? Oh, I think people are going to like it. Well, do you like it? So I think that's a really good thing that you are doing that. So let's talk about these stickers. You got some yeah, stickers, got stickers over. Yeah, we got one over here. So yes. make sure that y'all hit her up on Instagram and Twitter to get y'all stickers. Yes. She has a lot, y'all. But I really want to just commend you because coming from the same, like you're from East Event, you're from East Side. Yes. Okay, I'm from the East Side as well. And, you know, coming from the East Side, going to Jenkins High School, we both went to Jenkins High School. Yes. Then we both, you know, Clark Atlanta. And so I don't know, maybe I might go to New York next. I don't know. Yeah. But I was actually thinking about um, some grad schools that um, in New York. But I was really scared because I hear so much about, oh, it's a dog eat dog world out there. It's really just like, you just got to be. When are you going to be prepared for it? Mm -hmm. New York. Me graduating Clark and being just pushed into New York. Me and my best friend, this girl named Janelle, she was mass media major as well. She this we both decided to move to New York in two weeks. We both were working at Red Lobster at the time. We transferred our jobs. We didn't have major jobs. We just did it because why not? Mm -hmm. Like when are you gonna learn how to be with the elite? Right. Like, you know what That's I mean? True. Not just black elite. These are like Asians, Caucasians, like these are all types of people from all different places. Like if you're going to be the best, why not be amongst the best? Right, and that's, that's what New York is. Like, it pushes you. And people will, you know, try to bring you down. But if you are confident enough, see, a lot of people talk the talk, but they're not really it. Mm -hmm. So, like, all those people, they're going to try to attack you. They're going to say whatever. Oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Like, so many people said I couldn't rap, but I've been on more shows than they have. Like, mm -hmm. so many people, like, have with the top or the top underground artists when I first moved to New York, and they're still there, and I'm already right. caught up to them, and right. I'm about to surpass them. So that's what's up. It's, it's you know, you that's know, it up. works out. That's what's up, and that's what I want to also talk about. So today, you know, every week, every Monday or every Saturday, Georgia Media on the Insta on the Twitter page, which is the number one Georgia Media, we always do our top five pick of indie artists, and you were number one, right? So you are number one for a reason, and I believe that everyone who I um, have under my um, my agency, all my interns, they listen to all the music. Every like every day we listen to the music, 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 and everyone likes your wordplay, your energy in your music, your beats. Everybody, so shout out to OG Ron Lowe. Yes, Ron Lowe. It's just like you know, it's not a favor to the like that. I really think that you are a great person. You're a great um, you know musician, artist, all those things. So you're number one for a reason, and you're definitely gonna get a whole blog uh, coverage all that on you. Thank you. So, so my next thing that I really want to touch basis on is um, who's your number one or your like top five artists? Oh my god! <laughs> no genre, just artists. Just artists. Like who do you listen to that encourages you or just gets you? That encourage me the most. Okay. Um, I love Erica Badu. Mm -hmm. She really uplifts me. Like she gives me like that strong feminism that I need. Like she's raunch, can be raunchy at times. And DRE has I've been like a fan of her since a very young age, and she actually spent time in Savannah and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I met her um, one year I was at Jenkins actually. Who else do I listen to? J Cole. Like he's is really becoming a big part of my life. Like yeah. I really look up to J, J Cole a lot and his whole journey as an um, artist. Yeah. Um, who else do I listen to a lot? I'm trying to think. 
Um, I'm gonna throw somebody out there. Isaiah Rashad. Um, he's with TDE. I heard. I do him. listen to Kendrick and I love Kendrick, but to just throw five people out there, Isaiah Rashad. I think he has a nice story that people should you know look into and try to hear. And one more person. Bosco, she's from Savannah. She's coming out of Atlanta, and I think she's just she uplifts me because she's very eclectic, and I don't all I don't get like I don't get bored with her music. Mm-hmm. So like when I want something fresh, I can go to Bosco. Like That's you know what I mean? And I relate because she's like doing her thing. Yeah. So I think that those are five artists that like I really jam. If you go in my iTunes right now, you'll see their music. And, Okay, so as far as Bosco goes, do you have any other people that you know from Savannah, Georgia, or anywhere like nearby that you still communicate with that y'all have done features or just partner with or anything? Um, I actually played James and I. We did an event. Um, I have a uh, this group called Creators Against Violence. We come together and we try to like throw events for the city of Savannah. We're trying to start up some stuff. So I did um event with Clay James, and we've been meeting to record something, but. After, like, I've dropped my project, mm-hmm. I was doing so many shows that I haven't really been able to, like, get in the studio, but I've written songs, and mm-hmm. I do have something for us. I just got to, like, send it to him yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, me and Clay Hodges from Savannah, we were supposed to, like, do a song, but it was crazy. I got real drunk what one night. I got- oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I really, I don't call him Clay Hodges. I call him Clay, though. And that's crazy that you said that y'all supposed to do a song. So are y'all going to continue to do it? Oh, yeah. We're definitely going, like, I don't really, I don't try to rush it. Like, for me, like, most of my songs I write, like, on the spot. Or I have to, like, create it, like, when I'm in the moment. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do it. You know, just the night that we we were supposed to do it, I got drunk. And I couldn't end the recording day. I was done. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I told crazy. the world. So now you got to tell nobody. That's, yeah, crazy. Told about That's crazy. Okay. But. So with Clay, like what kind of song, if you could if you give that information, what kind of song was it going to be or would it be? I think that, I don't know. I, that's why we wanted to vibe out. Because okay, so I don't really do, like, like to, yeah, like, together. me personally, like, if I feel a beat and I feel like, okay, like, Mike Brown, when I first heard that beat, I fell asleep right into it, woke up, I dreamed about Mike Brown, I woke up, Mike Brown, this is your beat, you know what I mean? Like, I really have to feel it out. Like, if I listen to a beat and I don't get nothing from it, then it's going to probably be a trap song, and it's probably going to be something with that doesn't have, like, a content base. Mm-hmm. So, like, for me, I don't know, I'm just, like... I like the you just, just kind of dive me in. Okay, that's good. That's good. So just go ahead and announce any other upcoming things you have okay. going on in any city or whatever you have going on. Okay, so April 24th, I'm on DTF Radio in Harlem, New York. Um, every Sunday, I do this event called Sunday Service in New York. So if you ever come to New York, you're 21 and up. Free entry, free liquor, Sunday service, you'll hit the hottest DJs. And I have an all-female event every other Thursday in New York. No age group. Uh, I'm one of the hosts. It's called The Vibe. And if you come there, you can see art. You can see live performers at The Vibe. And I'm Kwana. And, yeah, <laughs> listen to my music. Yes, please listen to her music. And I also want you to go ahead and shout out your social media, your SoundCloud, everything. How people okay. can get in contact with you. So, my name is Quan. It's Q-U-A-N-N-A. So, if you look me up on any of the social media, that's Twitter, Instagram, it's Quana MC. So, that's Q-U-A-N-N-A-M-C. Once again, that's Q-U-A-N-N-A-M-C. You see how you do the- On everything, <laughs> like, so Twitter, Instagram, even Facebook, actually. Hit me up. If you want a sticker, I'll send you a sticker. If you want a copy of the project, I'll have those up soon. So, hit me up. Don't tell everybody, but I got you. Yeah, don't tell everybody. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you for coming to Georgia Media and Georgia. Thank you for having com. me. Oh my God. We're going to do this again because I feel like we have so much to talk about because we have like the same story. Right. Like, I just don't rap, but everything else is really the same. So we're going to definitely so do a sister. part two, y'all. So make sure you're tuned in for that. And I just want to say thank you one more time for coming thank in. Thank you. Give me a hell, bring it in. <laughs> Next year I blow hydro Who got a sick flow I do New that's is back in those two before I stepped up in the stoop My penmanship in the shoot Now I'm warming up that brute I'ma need that cream and sugar Seven figure the agenda like Come and get your lesson I can teach you how to mix it Great Da Vinci instrumentals This ish that's on my mental Be detrimental to niggas that live in the penitentiaries And niggas that's five percent Country girl, college girl, city girl, bad Who the fuck is that? Bitch I call it that class No lipstick, garlic glass
I spit, it's worth it. I go rap about my ends or dwell on them fake friends. But if they knew how I'm gon' live, they'll probably think again. In a world of bad bitches and hoes with low IQs, just a regular body eating chicken is fried too. Simmer down, boo. You taking shots, but you ain't jumping. You barely hitting the net. I can't worry about no necks when my brother dodging the tent. I'm in everybody, man. I ain't waiting in no lot. Cause these boys couldn't test me if they name was Einstein. If you looking for the answers, you should replay all my lines. And they say the culture down where this is. College girl, city girl, bad. Who the fuck is that? Bitch, I call her that class. No lipstick, throw the glass. I ain't even in my, I ain't even in my bag. Find it in.